Uh, welcome to the next uh, video in our Kahiva 2020 uh, video review series. Um, today I'm going to look at an aged Kahiva Silo 4. Uh, I need, I'll need to acknowledge uh, Trevor Lees. Thank you for gifting me this cigar again. Um, I need to also acknowledge that uh, Kahiva Silo 4 is a cigar that I um, don't tend to reach for uh, that often uh, amongst all the Kahiva Silo uh, cigars. Um, I think in the last four or five years, I would have definitely smoked more of the ones and twos, even the three, fives and sixes, and the fives have been hard to come by. Um, and I guess uh, the reason for that uh, is not because of flavour, but because of the, uh, the size itself. Uh, I've, I've got to admit to you that, you know, I, as I've mentioned in the first review, uh, 42 sixty-fourths of an inch, two-thirds of, of an inch, uh, 42 ring gauge, I consider you know the perfect ring gauge, um, and that's what I pay for, and that's what I, you know, I, re, I, I try to to you know go for. Um, even though the Sigla One's 40 ring gauge, the Sigla Five's 43, close enough, but um, you know that uh, Corona Gorda size that this uh, Sigla Four is um, a 46 ring gauge by 143 millimeters in length, or five and five eighth inches. Not something I, I, I tend to uh, go for. I think the last one that I had was in December last year. It smoked very, very well. Again, it was gifted by Trevor. Really enjoyed it. Um, and this one I've lit up and I'm smoking for the first third. The cold draw was similar to the Kiba Siglo 3. It had a uh, beautiful refined hay um, and a cedar element to it from the way it was stored. Um, the um, the flavour uh, that I'm getting off it is is more of that uh, you know, that beautiful deep hay uh, refined deep hay uh, quality and. Uh, you know, a little bit of vanilla bean or spice to it, uh, less, certainly less creamy. Um, I'm still enjoying it, but uh, I'd, even at this early point, I'd be inclined to say that I'd, I'd want to reach for a Kiva Siglo 3 if I had a choice of two. Um, uh, because uh, that one in the first review basically uh, you know, just was a little bit more creamy uh, throughout. Um, in terms of the Corona Gorda size, it's an interesting size for this Siglo series because the Linear 1492 line, uh, when it came out, uh, when it was announced in 1992, uh, it was uh, meant to celebrate the 500 year years since Christopher Columbus had landed in Cuba. And the uh, Linear 1492 series didn't actually, according to Cuban Cigar website, didn't actually come out to 1994. Um, so it was delayed, which if you are a Cuban cigar enthusiast, you would know that that's quite the norm. Uh, limited editions, regional editions, uh, quite a number of recent regular production cigars, are off, they're often delayed uh, from the time they're announced to the time they hit the market. Now the Linear 1492 series was meant to replace the Davidoff Chateau series that was uh, made in the El Guido factory when they were gone in 1991. Siglo 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 replaced them. The Siglo 6 came later, uh, announced in 2002 and we'll talk more about that in the future reviews. Um, but the Siglo 4 was a Corona quarter size that uh, uh, the size is loosely correlated, but the Siglo 4 was the size that stood out on its own. Now, in, in the Davidoff line, it was a Davidoff 4000 cigar uh, that was the same same size, but uh, for the Linear 4092 series, it was, it was more of a, a new size. And when it comes to Corona Gorda sizes, um, they're much more stable. I noticed about us who say, um, don't uh, delete them. In the last 20 years haven't deleted them anywhere near like they've deleted. Uh, Corona sizes and Corona Grand is in uh, uh, Lonsdale's, uh, for example. Um, the most recent ones uh, 
have been the 2014 St. Louis Race Serie A, the, uh, uh, the uh, 2010 uh, Rafael uh, Gonzalez uh, Corona's Extra and the uh, Cigar that was only recently updated in 2019 but uh, never got uh, much uh, attention uh, in the time it was around was the uh, Romeo and Julieta Exhibition Number 3. That was uh, deleted in uh, 2013. Now, there, there are a, a group of other uh, Corona Gorda sizes that were prominent in the punch marker. The Black Prince deleted in 2002. The... Uh, the... Royal Selection number 11, discontinued in uh, 2010, and the Super Selection discontinued in 2002. Uh, out of all those, the Black Prince would have been the one that enthusiasts would, would have greatly lamented uh, at the time. But, um, yeah, they're the main ones. Uh, Elra de Mundo had a, a Corona Gorda size, also deleted in 2010, but that's about it. Um, yeah, so Corona Gorda sizes tend to uh, you know, stick around. There's a great number of Corona Gorda sizes that are available in regional production and uh, also special releases at the moment. So at the time that a lot of these releases were available, they might have been more in the larger size. But now that uh, the Petite Corona, the or the Marevis uh, 42 ring gauge by 129, which is a Cohiba Siglo 2 size. That was once the, the quintessential uh, Habano size. Uh, these days it's been replaced by the uh, Petit Robusto, which is more your 50 ring gauge by um, four and a half inches, you know, 110 to 115 millimeters long, maybe a bit shorter, maybe a bit longer. Um, so anyway, the uh, it's still it's still smoking really really well this cigar. Hmm. I think what the point I wanted to make uh, is that uh, when this first came out in 1992, it might have been a bit more on the larger side, but now uh, um, 25 to 30 years later, uh, that. 50 ring gauge by 110, 115 millimetres, uh, four and a half inch size. That Petit Robusto size is considered the de facto or the quintessential size. And so the Corona Gorda in terms of its ring gauge is, um, uh, ironically enough, it's uh, more on the small size, I guess. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoke down into the middle third and I'm going to come back and give you some more notes of how it's smoking. So I'm um, coming into the, uh, the middle third. And it's still dominating in those um, uh, quality refined hay um, notes. Uh, uh, it certainly has a little bit of that vanilla bean, very very little cream, um, much more in the Cooper Cigar Three. Um, And stronger in the nose uh, than the Ciclo 3 at any point. Um, I'll rip out it again. Certainly um, stronger than the nose. Um, but I know that uh, El Press has uh, mentioned that you get a clean tobacco. Um, quality to these uh, when you smoke them, and uh, look, I have to agree with that. Um, the uh, tobacco does seem like it's yeah, very, very clean when you smoke through it. Just a touch of spice. Fairly consistent in its flavours. 
Uh, in terms of strength, it's a, it's a, it's a touch stronger than uh, than the Kiba Silo Three, probably yeah, because of the uh, the, uh, the ring gauge. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I have a I have a box set aside uh, of uh, the Kiba Silo Four, I think. From, 15 or 16, uh, I think uh, I'll let that be for the time being. I think I would much prefer this cigar to be aged than uh, smoking it young, uh, that's, but that's uh, my preference. Um, I did mention in the last review that uh, the the uh, the one difference I find with the Linear Classica uh, cigars, which are the uh, Lancheros, the, uh, the Espondidos, the Coronas Especiales, they're the Robustos, excuse me, those those, those cigars, um, when they age, they tend to give uh, a very distinctive buttery texture to them. Um, and when these age, they have more of a, a creamy texture to them. Certainly, that is true of this, and more so in the Cuba Single 3. I'm not getting... Any sort of uh, butter texture to it. It's more of a, a creamy texture to it. Uh, but as I mentioned before, it's uh, only slight uh, in the uh, in this uh, in this Ciglo four. Okay, so uh, I'm going to smoke this down into the, the final third and uh, give you my uh, concluding thoughts. So uh, I'm well into the final third, and uh, yeah, just an interesting point about this cigar. It had a bit of a the leaves are a bit bunched, and uh, this is not from experience to just to let that be, and not to touch up the side that wasn't burning so well. And uh, it's uh, it was a little bit bigger on that other side, the wrapper, the difference from that side to that side. Um, but I just know from experience not to uh, not char the wrapper, not to light up unless I have to um, to correct it. Uh, it's been um, as a consequence of that, those uh, bunch leaves. It was a, a little, a little pungent. Um, and uh, still, uh, the, the main um, note that we're getting from this is the um, that. Uh, deeper refined hay element to it and the uh, vanilla bean is uh, the essence is still there but uh, it's uh, more what you describe as uh, spice but, uh, nonetheless it's it's been a good cigar definitely I wouldn't be that upset if I had a box of these and uh, a few of these were like this at this stage. Um, but I'd have to conclude that um, at the moment that the uh, I'd still reach for a Kiba Siglo 3 um, before I reach for a Siglo 4. Um, but never mind. Um, it's one of those things that uh, I think I'll... Uh, address uh, further on in the future and uh, I'll smoke some more Sigma 4s every now and then uh, just to get a different experience or the possibility of getting a different experience. Uh, I uh, want to thank you again for um, uh, for your um, watching this review and uh, I look forward to bringing you some more cigars um, in the Kahiba uh, video review series. Uh, until then, I bid you happy smoking and I'll see you next time.